Hi guys, it's been a minute since I've just come to you via vlog, so I wanted to check in. I'm in the process of creating my goals for 2023, and I thought it would be good to just pop here on the camera and kind of walk you through the questions that I ask our team agents as they go through their goal setting exercises, and then also how I formulate my goals for the next year. So making sure that they're smart, that they're measurable, that they're actionable, and they're able to be like done, right? Because we're not just gonna dream and have this big goal, like we want it to actually happen. And so let's just kind of dive into, if you were working with me and I was helping you come up with your goals, this is exactly what I would do for you. Let's kind of roll into it real quick. First things first is anytime we're gonna look ahead, we should always kind of look back, right? Let's take a moment to just reflect on how the last year has gone. Well, it's 2022. Oh, there's my husband, hold on. Pardon the interruption. Has been called, he's in the middle of beekeeping today and doing honey harvest and just had to tell me about it. Anyways, I was gonna say, first thing you're gonna do, right? We're gonna reflect on 2022, the year that just happened, we are wrapping it up. How did it go, right? Like, let's kind of have a really good look at it. So typically what I'll do is I'll pull up my goal setting sheet that I have from the previous year and I just go through and I line item like, was that goal met? If it was met, it turns into a green color. If I did not meet that goal, turns into a red color. What that just shows me, it's a visual, because you'll start to see, is the whole page green? Is the whole page red? Where are we at? And then as I go through and I'm meeting with my agents on my team, I'm just asking, how did the last year go? What are they gonna say, right? They're probably gonna tell me something. Second question I'm gonna ask is, what were your plans, your dreams, or your concrete goals if you had any? Because again, we're looking back at the past. What was it that we had intended for 2022? Third question, what disappointments or regrets did you experience this last year? So this one's interesting because regret can be really powerful, right? And when we're looking back, obviously there's gonna be some choices we made that maybe we're not very proud of or our behavior or action steps. Do you have any regrets, right? Because regret can be really motivating or it can be hurtful. I'm gonna help you guys make sure that your disappointments and regrets turn into a positive opportunity at the end of this. But it's just a good question to ask, like note to self. The next thing you're gonna ask is, what did you feel you should have been acknowledged for but weren't, okay? So is there something that you think you're really proud of and nobody's called you out for it or shouted you out? What's something that you didn't get credit for? Is there anything? Next one is gonna be, what were two or three recurring themes that kept happening over the year? This one's always fun. I know with some of my agents, it's gonna be that they didn't time block or it's gonna be that they weren't consistent in their lead follow-up. They didn't sit open houses consistently or they didn't post on social media like they said they were. A lot of them said that they were gonna start on video still doesn't exist. So those are things we're gonna talk about. What were the major life lessons you learned this past year? Was there any big ahas that you had that you were like, wow, that's interesting. Moving on, how are we gonna get better? So I was just telling this to a friend, I was on her podcast and I was like, I feel like every year with entrepreneurship, it's a new level. And as much as I think I'm planned and prepared for the next year, like life and business always throws something new at me and it's a new level of responsibility and almost like a new shift that opens up in my brain of like, wow, I didn't know this world existed, but here we go. So for me, my big learning lesson was really people management. This is the first time I've been in charge of people aside from one person. I'm now managing multiple people and it's been a big lesson and a perspective shift for me too. Um, yeah, anyways, what worked last year? Okay, so we're gonna go through the positives. What was really great last year? What actually happened that worked, right? And then what didn't work? So what was something that we tried and it just, it failed and it happened. So going back to the regrets question, I'm gonna ask, you have some regrets. What opportunities does that present? Because there's always opportunity out of those disappointments, right? And just kind of curating and thinking and chewing on all of these things, we're not, like there's no right or wrong answer because this is just your perspective and your history, right? That's what happened in the last 12 months. But going through goals, so let's shift out of the Q&A, out of the reflection, and get into some tangibles, right? Like what are we actually gonna put pen on paper, or in this case, typing up in my Google Doc? I want to then jot down everything that we kind of talked about. So I'm highlighting in green if it got done, in red if it did not get done. And then on the things that are red, am I gonna roll those over to the next year and make those a new goal? So like one of those for me was, I was supposed to create a wheel, uh, not a will, a will <laughs> or a form in estate planning, right? Because we own a property now and we have kids. And so what happens if we pass away? I do not have a legal document prepared for that. That's something that I was supposed to do last year. I need to do that this coming year, okay? The other thing I said I was gonna do that did not happen was $10,000 saved towards a new truck. Didn't do it. 
So I wanna do that for next year because Ryan's truck has officially hit 200,000 miles on his Chevy Colorado and his goal is to get to 222,222 miles. So two, 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 and then we can move on with a new truck, but it's around the corner. So we need to start saving up cash for that. Um, okay, and then I also jot down what did work, right? So one of the things that worked for me was leaning into leadership and delegating showings to team members. So I was able to actually step back from the business instead of me doing every single showing like I had been doing, I'm able to delegate tasks off to the team now, which enables me to then serve the team better. And so it is a lot of trust doing that with clients, but it really is more for the better. And the more I do it, the better I am for it and the better my team is for it because they're also getting experience and they're out in the field, right? And then what did not work? I put poor attention on my health. I put myself on the back burner this year. No more. I've been to yoga twice this week, by the way. It's worth it, so just keep going. Another thing that did not work this year, which I've apologized profusely for, is we did not celebrate our wedding anniversary. Boo, fail there. So this year we are going on vacation or something. Okay, so we know what worked. We know it did not work. We saw what goals happened and which ones did not happen. So let's move into looking forward and looking ahead for 2023. First thing is the category of work, right? So your business, what are your work goals and business goals? So for me, I have the number of closings I want to do, the number of transactions I want to complete. I have the number of income I want to receive from other revenue sources like coaching and mentorship. We still have the honey company that we take care of. There are other ways to produce income besides just transactions. And so I'm looking forward to getting more income that way. And then I want to do a podcast tour. That's one of my goals this year where I'm going on different people's podcasts and just exposing myself to new networks and new groups of people because I feel like I'm just kind of in this Hawaii bubble and I need to get out of it. I also want to hire a real estate specific coach this year. I've worked with a business success coach. I have a brand coach, but I do not have a real estate coach. Not to say that I'm trying to go from 25 transactions to 50, but I do think there's always ways to improve even if I want my income to stay pretty much the same. I doubled my income this year and so I don't need to necessarily double it again, but I mean, we'll see, we'll see. So there's ways to improve and more so for me, it's all about streamlining the processes to make it as seamless as possible. I also want to activate our SkillBridge partnership. So that's where we work with people who are exiting the military. Like let's say if you're in the army and you're ready to retire or you're just leaving the army because you're done with that career and you're ready to move on. We can actually work with them and they get paid their regular pay to work with us and become an intern for a couple months. So I'm super excited to get that rolling and just help more military members out process. So after we do the business category, right? Just bring them all the things that you wanna achieve in the next year. Then we're gonna roll into financial goals, okay? So this is different from business. This is not just how much money you wanna make with your business, but what are you gonna do with that money? So for me, I want to hire an appraisal for this condo that we're in, in the summer. So we'd be owning it for a full year. I would like to see how much it's appreciated in value. And then I wanna look into renting it out because honestly, once we hit that one year mark, we got it in September. So July, August, I get appraisal. I could potentially rent it out in the fall and then buy the second property as long as the numbers make sense. So that's on my radar for this year. I still wanna save $10,000 towards a new truck. I still wanna max out both of our Roth IRAs with 6,000 each in investments. And I wanna do that before the end of quarter two because the longer it's in the account, obviously the more compounding effect we have. So I'd rather not dose it out a little month by month. I'll just do big chunk in the beginning. Debt, if you guys have any debt, that should always be a goal, right? Pay off the freaking debt, stop buying things that you cannot afford. Another financial goal could be, maybe that means quitting a side hustle and going all in on real estate or all in on whatever it is you're doing and just going all in on it, okay? That could be a financial goal. And then any vacations and stuff like that, budgeting for big projects and things. Okay, so let's go, we did business, we did financial, let's do family. I love this category, but it's also sometimes the most challenging because it's so easy to dream and fantasize about business and all the money we're gonna make, but then when we think about putting quality time as a goal, it can be a little bit hard to put down on paper. So it literally can mean something as easy as I'm gonna schedule two dates a month for a total of 24 dates a year. It doesn't seem like a lot to do two dates a month, but then when you say it's 24 for the whole year, that's a lot of quality time that you're getting with your significant other. Another thing I put on here is I'm gonna add pickleball to family fun nights. Um, so fun story, we I got my husband a pickleball set for his birthday and it's just, it's something that's trending in Hawaii. It might be trending in the mainland too, but it's just everywhere here, there's a ton of clubs now and I've never actually played it before. I was on the tennis team in high school and sucked at it. It, but pickleball is a little bit different. We went out to the courts last weekend and had a ball. We were there for like three hours playing pickleball and just shooting shit. And so it was really fun. And my son has been begging to go back and play some more. And so just doing things like that where it's active, we're outside, there's no screens. 
just doing that more consistently instead of sitting around and watching another Netflix show. Another thing for family is we have a lot of travel coming up and so I have a lot of intentional things like that. The next category I have on my personal goals is travel related because I like to map out all of my trips coming up for the year. You don't necessarily have to do this, but if you do know you have a lot of stuff going on, it's just good to visualize. And I actually have something almost every single month. So I put down like January, I'm going to Colorado for a leadership retreat. March, I've got spring break. We're talking about going to something Disney related. April is my sister's baby shower. May is going to be end of school. Are we going to do another trip, an inner island trip or something? June, my sister's baby due. So I got to go fly back. July, we've got the build event in San Antonio. August is our wedding anniversary. October is EXP Con. And then Christmas, we always do our Pacific Northwest tour every other year for my side of the family. And so right there, I can see, bam, that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine potential trips. And they ain't cheap. So I immediately know, oh my God, we really need to budget ahead for all the upcoming travel that we have. And I'm gonna take advantage of business incentives and write-offs as much as freaking possible. So note to self. The next category and the last one is really personal. And I kind of combine this with like being or spiritual, but for me, it's also health. So yoga two to three times a week consistently. I need to build the habit, get back into it. I was doing so good and I would go to Yoga Sculpt at Core Power at 5.45 in the morning and I would do it three times a week. My body felt great. I had energy. I started the day high on endorphins and then we moved. And then now I'm in charge of morning routine with the kids because Ryan's working a new job and so it's throwing me off honestly <laughs> I've got to figure out how to get it back in and I just started this week and this is the second week of December as I film this and the only way to do it honestly is when the kids are at school so that means my schedule's a little wonky and I have to literally like produce in the morning take a break go to do yoga and then come back shower and then pick up the kids after so it's it's kind of throwing me for a loop on like how to make it work but I'm dedicated to making it work pickleball for sure you get super sweaty and you're like running and my butt was sore after we played pickleball and then walking more with the kids and the dog so literally after I take my son to the school bus stop I've got about 45 minutes before my daughter goes to preschool so I've been walking the neighborhood for 45 minutes in between the bus drop off and when I got to take her to pre-k so there's that another thing I want to do personally is a friend date once a month so it's kind of like a friend field trip. There's a lot of things in Hawaii I haven't done yet. So I just went to the Honolulu Museum of Art, which was really beautiful. You guys should all go if you haven't been. But I just went with a friend and then we went to a really fun classy lunch after and we're still talking about the salad because it was so freaking good. But just intentional things outside of like a beach day. It doesn't always have to cost money, but I just want to like play tourist and do new things with people. So I think the next thing we said we were gonna do is I've done the palace, but she has not. And so I was like, did you know all the queen's jewels are at the palace? Like, let's go. <laughs> so we're gonna do that. Another thing personally is I would love to host people over for dinner at least once a month. I really, it's one thing about owning my own place now and having control of the kitchen is that I love hosting people. And I think it's so good to just build relationships that way, right? I've started watercoloring, which is really fun. So that's one of my goals. And then, oh, I added do four adrenaline rushing new things by the end of the year. I have no idea what those are gonna be yet. I've already jumped out of a plane, but maybe we're gonna dive with sharks. Maybe we're gonna do a helicopter tour with the doors off. Like, I don't know, we'll do something fun. And then at the very end of all of this exercise is getting super clear with your why, right? Why do you want all of these things? What is it that's driving you to actually get these done? Um, and so for you guys, I'll just read this word for word because it really inspires me and I hope it inspires you too. But I said, my why is that my family deserves the best, the best of me as a wife and a mother, but also a variety of experiences and memories that will enrich their own lives to become better versions of themselves. I can help create the space and the world they live in by working hard with consistent effort to provide a safe and stable environment for us to thrive in together. My children are my legacy and I'm actively creating the future I want to leave behind. But really it's just, it's getting clear, right? That's the whole point that we do this. Take some time out to reflect and get really intentional and like tap in on your inner thoughts and feelings and your gut checks. And like specifically for those who are entrepreneurs or realtors, right? Cause a lot of my audience is realtors, like really evaluate your circle. It is the place that you're at going to take you to where you wanna be. And then also for a lot of these, it's like, who do you have to become to achieve these goals, okay? I will end this here, but I just thought I would share because we're literally doing this with all of our team members, a couple of Zoom meetings a week to go one-on-one -on -one with everybody to go through these questions, go through this exercise, take the time out of the day to get super intentional with it. Because if you don't have a plan, what's the phrase? It's like, if you fail the plan, then you plan to fail, right? 
and we don't want you to do that. If you guys have questions, of course, you know you can always reach me, follow me on social media here, just drop it in the comments. But we've got exciting stuff coming up. 2023 is gonna be our best year yet, and so I'm so excited for it to get started. If you guys like vlogs, let me know. This is my official vlog number two, so we are experimenting. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm excited to get going. It's gonna be good stuff. Okay, I'll stop blabbering on. Catch you later. See ya.